Hello, dear listeners. Yes, this hello. Is, yes, this is, uh, this is Dave and I bravely going where we have not gone before, and that is uh, unedited and um, showing who we are. Our faces are here, our, not just our voices, and uh, yeah, so we have a reason for this, though. We do have a reason. Dave, do you want to you want to tell people why we're doing this? Well, over the last little while, and it's been a gap you know, between season three and yeah. the upcoming season four, and there have been messages on our social media, which we love those. that We, we love getting messages, so uh, keep them coming. But people wondering, you know, where are we? Is, uh, when's the next uh, season starting? And yeah. those, those sorts of questions were, were coming along. And yeah, this is different for us. Um, and it's brave uh, not only being recording live, but also, um, you'll remember, Mary Ellen, I shared that I was in radio for a number of years. And I have I was often told I had the, the face for radio. And I, I thought it was a compliment for the longest time. And I've taken over this room, which, as you can see, it's very yeah not exactly like me. Um, no. It is the craft room that took a long time to get ready for uh, our daughter. And she's moved out. And now it's the podcast room. And I did have it on blurry, blurry your background, and it just made my head look enormous. So I'm going to go with the distracting background because at least it's distracting me. Well, there we go. There we go. And I, uh, yeah. So for people who can't quite see all of my screen, I have my microphone sitting on top of something to elevate it, as well as this book, which is, <laughs> uh Yeah. Dave's going to laugh. Everybody has a podcast except you. And that's kind of what got us going a couple of years it ago. Did. Very good yes. book for anyone considering a podcast. Yes. Yes. Uh, amazing Christmas gift for my daughter. So we wanted to take this opportunity to share a little bit about ourselves and who we are out in the world when we're not busy creating a podcast, which isn't to say that we haven't been busy creating season four because we have been, but yeah. there's been lots of other things um, that we've been up to. And so we just thought we'd share a few of those things. Uh, you remember that season three ended, uh, I think, around the end of February, and I was back from the Dominican Republic, and my mom was experiencing some health issues, and I took her to multiple appointments, uh, as did some other family members, and uh, ultimately, it resulted in a diagnosis of uh, bile duct and liver cancer. So that that has happened, and um, yeah, we've been uh, busy supporting her and just wrapping our loving arms around her and doing what we can to to keep her comfortable and healthy and yeah so that's that's part of what I've been up to since uh the last time you heard from us and we've talked a lot in the previous three seasons about uh family the importance yeah. of family and family first and uh and as we've often said when plans fall through that life gets in the way yeah. and uh you got it you've got to do what you have to do and uh, I know I shared in season one that I lost a brother relative well quite young I wouldn't even see relatively young he died in 1998 in his 40s mm -hmm. and so my I have two other siblings my the oldest is my sister and then the next one older than me my brother um he uh, was dealing with a serious illness and through a, a series of unbelievably bad events he uh ends up being in hospital for weeks and it's been a it's been a tough go and uh, I've been visiting going down to see him and um, he is making a remarkable recovery in the last few weeks. So we we expect, we, the royal we, that he'll be able to uh, get to the next steps of recovery, get uh, released from hospital, which is the goal always. And uh, he's going to be, he's going to be fine. I, I truly believe that. So that's, you know, we didn't start off on the two happiest topics, but it, it demonstrates that you do, you, you do family first. Well, yeah, that's that's really a commitment that you and I each have, right? Is that we're very committed to our families, and yep. and uh, yeah, I think unconsciously that's probably why that's where we started. Um, on a lighter topic, golf season <laughs> started mid May and lasted gloriously through till mid September. And uh, as Dave knows, I golf twice a week. I golf uh, in a couple of leagues, one with, and I'm not a very good golfer, but nonetheless. I golf with my ladies uh, one night a week, and then I golf with my husband and another couple. And we started that. Uh, uh, this is our second season doing that. And sometimes we also golf in in tournaments as well. So I I love being outside. I love being out in nature. I love being with friends. And oh my gosh, we laugh. We laugh so much when we're golfing. And that's 
probably because if we weren't laughing, we'd be crying because as I said, not really a very good golfer, but we do have a lot of fun. I got out a few times this summer, not as not as many as the summer before, but uh, and it is a love hate relationship, uh, an incredibly difficult game to be. I don't think you're ever as good at it as you'd like to be, no matter. So once you realize that, and for me, I, I mean, not that every guy does it, but you you know you get frustrated with shots and and so on. But when you just start saying, eh, <laughs> "What else did I expect?" Because I, I went through the cycle where I would end a golf season, golfing a few rounds of summer. Put the clubs away. Don't do any practice. Uh, don't take any lessons. Get the clubs back out. Maybe dust them off and realize that I'm just as bad or worse than the year before. It was a mystery to me for many years. And I, I finally just come to accept it and just go out, have fun, have yeah. friendship, uh, maybe something refreshing and enjoy yourself. Yes. Responsibly. Yes. Yes. Beverages for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing that, uh, another thing that I enjoyed doing this summer, um, I'm blessed to have a friend who owns a cottage a few hours away. And so I, I had uh, the opportunity to help her out with some renovations this summer. Uh, but I also got to visit and just relax on her dock in the day and then around the fire, campfire at night. And, you know, sometimes it was just her and I, and sometimes we had other friends up or, you know, a husband, whatever. And, uh, it's great again, out in nature, um, but also time spent with friends and and lots of laughter and the odd beverage. So we we rent one a year, every mm. summer we do a week, and um, everyone different because you want to try a new lake, a new cottage, whatever. Yeah. And we missed two summers ago, and we were determined this summer to go again. And probably it's the same with our our neighbors to the south in, in the U.S. that uh, rental rates have not went down. No, <laughs> it's become a, a fairly expensive thing to do, but we, there are adult children come and we have friends come by for a night or two and we, you know, we, uh, play games, uh, everyone cheats, cheats, but me, oh. um, campfires and, uh, some fishing, usually not successful. Um, but just a great time. And it's one of my favorite weeks of the year because I grew up. My family having a little live bait and tackle shop. I grew up fishing, grew up on the lake. So this brings me back to that with family and with friends. So it's perfect and it's a perfect recharge as well. Yeah. Yeah. Another another outdoor activity that I had this summer was uh, volunteering with the Mennonite Disaster Service. So um, we spoke last season with Dr. Kevin King. I think it was episode nine of season three. And he's the executive director for the Mennonite Disaster Service. And if if you haven't listened to that episode, that's probably one of the most inspiring uh, episodes, like guests rather, that, that I think that we've had the privilege of, of interviewing. And uh, so I had committed that um, I would, to see what was out there with the Mennonite Disaster Service sometime in the next several months. And so I did. I went on to the Canadian website and wasn't there an opportunity less than three hours from my house um, they had a family build happening and I called, it's called a family something or another. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I, I was accepted as a volunteer cook, so I was super excited. And unfortunately the night before I was scheduled to leave, uh, I came down with listeria. So I was a couple of days late getting there. Um, but I had such a great time. The, the people that I met from uh, across Ontario who were there working with MD, volunteering with MDS and building cabins uh, were fabulous, like just amazing individuals. And then I was also cooking in the kitchen with volunteer cooks for the camp because camp was going on while we were building new cabins. So, yeah, it was Fraser Lake Camp near Bancroft and uh, great, just a great organization, great human beings. The kids were a bunch just so much fun. And uh, it really brought me back to my youth when I was a camper and, you know, campfire songs every night and skits at the end of the week. And yeah, it was, it was a great time. Well, that, it does sound, and and you know, I heard it. I was here for it when you did the pledge. And I'd like to think it wasn't just because you knew you'd never hear the end of it that you did it, which I, I know it wasn't. And I've, I've told Mary Ellen lots of times that I, I admire her work ethic and her commitment to 
community, whether it's through the job she used to do or just volunteering um, to different groups at the same time and, and doing a lot of work for, for other people. Um, I've, uh, <laughs> I don't have that track record. Um, there's, you know, me and the dog, uh, we, we hang out a lot. And as we walk and I, I'm not uh, overstating it when I say when we literally walk hundreds of kilometers a month, it's become a bit of an um, unhealthy obsession, maybe a healthy slash unhealthy obsession. But um, I got I get chances to to do some some volunteer work right right close to home, um, and that's with adult children who seem to move every year. Especially our now our oldest, uh, our son is starting his career, helped him move into an adult apartment. So I I'm thinking he's done for a bit, and our daughter's in her third year of university and has moved every year. And um, that's, uh, it's, I do realize now I should have bought a truck years ago, just <laughs> bit the bullet and had to have a truck because uh, packing it inside a vehicle is not a lot of fun. Uh, but again, I guess I have to harken back to that. It's what you do. But um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, who, I complain about it, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I'd be, I'd be right there in the middle of it. And I, and I don't mind uh, doing that. No, not at all. I've also been busy uh, with working part time. I <clears throat> think I've said before on the podcast, it's pretty hard to convince people I'm retired. It's kind of more like semi-retired because uh, I have a waitressing job that I do on weekends. And uh, I also fill in at schools as a substitute principal or vice principal whenever whenever I'm needed. And I think one of my favorite things, one of my favorite things about the waitressing job is that um well, I love interacting with the regulars, first of all. I also, though, really enjoy meeting new people. So where the diner is located is just off of uh, uh, main highway or the freeway, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> and so people will stop by and say, oh, well, you know, what is there to do around here? And I, I love being able to show yeah. off and talk about the amazing part of Ontario that that we live in. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I do I do enjoy that. And I think the thing that I like the most about being in a school is the positive energy and the opportunity to make a difference for people, whether it's for uh, a parent or a child or a staff member, all in conversation, you know, it's just, just listening, just listening. Yes. And sometimes that's, that's all somebody needs. Right. So yeah, I really enjoy that. Now, I guess I should have mentioned under uh, volunteerism, I was forced to volunteer when I was called for a jury selection. That that was, uh, they they thanked us so much for coming in. And I thought, hmm, uh, that's not how the letter read. Um, but it was it was an experience and I was happy to do it. It is a civic duty. I was happy to do it. Um, I guess if you're doing it while you're working, you're paid at the same time. So while we're retired, you nothing. But um, yeah, it was, uh, I didn't get selected and uh, it was a lottery. So I'm telling myself, well, that's why they, they didn't want me. It was just right. sheer luck. Uh, but when you get down to the final 12 or 14, then it starts getting personal. But uh, but I, it was um, an eye-opening thing to do. And uh, they call in a lot of people to try to get one jury. For example, the, the one I was involved in, around 300 individuals called for a jury of 12 plus two uh, ex, uh, alternates. Alternates, yeah. It's, it seems like a outrageous number to me it seems a little overkill 300 i don't know the science behind that many people but many people can't do jury duty whether it's financial or medical sure. or whatever but um no i was i was there and uh would have done it but uh, and would have really clawed my way to the top to be the the foreman but um so while mary ellen you're out doing you, you love jobs interacting with the public i as i said on other occasions i i try to avoid the public uh, not all the time, but sometimes. Um, but I've been doing some bucket list things because we we say to people, don't wait, do them. And exactly. unfortunately, my Fenway uh, Park experience, I was going to go with a lifelong friend and he passed away before we could do it. And then a very, very good friend of mine who I've known for near, nearly as long. And we did get to do it. And I do want to make it clear, though, I am not a Red Sox fan because people start assuming that and I don't need the hate mail. <clears throat> um but and then a life a trip of a lifetime anniversary my wife and i went to, over the summer to hawaii and toured all the major islands and beautiful people and a beautiful setting just to 
and we had a chance to see it from above in a, in a helicopter and that was just goosebumps it was really quite a cool experience and on the next bucket list the when is what i'm trying to figure out is to do the um, camino de santiago whether all of it across france to to spain or just part of it i don't know but I'm really eager to take that challenge on. I thought the Appalachian Trail was my challenge. And when I saw five to seven months to complete it, um, call me a quitter. But I thought, no, that might not be for uh, someone retired in their, barely in their 60s. Right, right. Well, I do feel like all of the thousands of kilometers, miles that you walk your dog, Pippa, I do feel like really you're in training for that next bucket list adventure. I think so. I think I can, I, I may be underestimating it. I'd like to see a presentation on it. My brother was describing that it play, in Kingston, he went a, a couple, did a presentation about the prep, what to expect and all those things. I'd like to do that to benefit from someone else's experience because you can go in pretty naive. Yeah. But I'm really eager. That's constantly on my mind. Awesome. Awesome. Well, and last but not least, because, you know, having spent an entire career in education, uh, I am a self-professed lifelong learner. So I got two things on the go right now. Uh, in August, I started a two-year communications program called the Team Management and Leadership Program through Landmark Worldwide. It's an online program. Um, and I, <clears throat> I'm so excited about all the people that I've met in the last however many weeks it's been, um, cause they're all across the globe, like all across the globe. And we have so much fun because really what we're doing is, is playing on teams. And, and I do mean play. I, I mean, I do mean play because we, we pull together and create, uh, projects called games, uh, that are designed specifically to allow us to implement the training that we're getting around communication and teamwork. And so my gosh, it's just, it's an, it's an incredible experience. And if, you know, if anybody out there uh, is looking for a challenge, um, I would recommend, I would recommend looking up landmark worldwide um, great courses that they offer. And again, online. So fabulous. The second thing that I'm doing is uh witch school. So Listeners will remember that uh, I think it was episode 11 of season three, we interviewed the founder of Witch School Canada, mm -hmm. that's Kiki Keskinen, and uh, she invited us to uh, register for Witch School, and I took her up on that. So that starts for me later this fall, and I am I am super pumped, and I do promise that I will share what that experience is like as we are recording episodes for season four. Now, I forgot to tell you, I hit a bit of a roadblock for one of the educational experiences I would have liked to have done. I suggested to my daughter that mm -hmm. I uh, audit and attend one of her courses at the university because I thought, mm -hmm. wouldn't that be a great bonding experience? And I cannot express how wrong I was. Apparently that wasn't. And I don't know if it was just being embarrassed to be with your dad or being in a class that I'd have no clue yeah. what they're doing because uh, if it's one of the sciences, forget it. <laughs> um, so I, I guess all of this to say yeah. that throughout the past few months and, and weeks that we've been in touch, we've been, we've been, you know, talking about planning um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get on a, a topic and I'll go in 180 the other way and Mary Ellen just waits till I run back. Uh, with my thoughts. So through her commitment and patience, uh, we're making headway uh, yeah. towards getting toward the, the next uh, season. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited that, uh, you know, while you and I have been out in the world, living our best lives in retirement, really, uh, for the most part, um, we come across and cross paths with the most interesting people and have conversations with them and say, hey, would you like to be a guest on our podcast? Yeah. So, you know, we've already we've already spoken to and interviewed a few people. Um, we've we spoke with one woman who planned and has executed her move to Spain from the States right. uh, a year after retiring. So I'm excited to for listeners to hear from her. And then we have uh, got an interview coming up with a brewmaster. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. How 
not da- I, listeners. I can't tell you how excited Dave is about this one. Truly. I'll take him up if he says come down here and learn how to brew beer. I'll <laughs> I'll be the first down to Oswego, New You're York. There. You're there. And then um, who else? Oh yeah, we talked to the retirement coach. Yes. 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 Very, very interesting. Very interesting what she does. So anyway, we've got lots of other guests lined up and we will, we will share more about that when we actually record episode one of season four. Right. It's just meant to be a little, um, a little peek into the lives that are Dave and Mary Ellen and a promise, a commitment to you. We really are working on season four. I don't have an actual date that I can promise and swear to, It'll be before the end of 2024. That much I can promise you. Yes. And again, and we say this at the end of almost every episode, your support means everything. Uh, I mean, we love meeting people, hearing their stories, but knowing someone's out there like an echo chamber back to us is nice. And thank you for your support. Thanks for asking if you're one of the people who did. And as Mary Ellen said, season four is on the way. 